Morning freaks, I had to uh, drop my car after this service, so I have no car today, which means I've got to walk all the way home, which is good. Gonna get the steps up, you know, it all counts. Now, a few weeks ago, I made a video about VO2 max workouts and how you can actually do them, but what I did is I basically made a video about my personal favorite VO2 max workouts. I didn't actually look at which is the most effective, and someone pointed that out in the comments, and I don't like to do things bad, I like to do things properly, so we're gonna finish that video off today with a part two and talk about the actual science and what the science actually tells you to do to increase your VO2 max. Let's fucking get it. You might be asking yourself, what the hell is VO2 max? Well, oh my god, this thing works too well. VO2 max is essentially the maximum amount of oxygen that you can actually intake when you're running. So imagine if you plot your oxygen intake on a graph, what would essentially happen is that your oxygen would go up and up and up and up and up to a certain point and then completely cap out, meaning that you could no longer take in any more oxygen, no matter how much faster you actually run. And so it makes sense that you'd want to train this to get better at it because the more oxygen that you can get in, before you hit that point, the faster you're going to be able to actually run. There's fucking fast food everywhere in Australia. It's fucked. And so the next thing to think about is what speed are these VO2 max workouts? Well, Everything that I've read seems to suggest that it's the critical velocity that you get to at around 8 to 12 minutes. So the maximum amount of speed that you can hold for 8 to 12 minutes is going to be around your VO2 max. It varies through a lot of people, but it's around that effort. So if you don't know that, you know, and you're a 20 minute 5k runner, then it's going to be a bit faster than your 5k, probably not quite your 3k but getting around that pace and for someone even slower it's going to be even slower than that just it's a bit different for everyone but for every single person it's definitely hard jeez 18000 steps for today so far Okay, let's get into this science. So there are a lot of studies on VO2 max, obviously, and from what I can tell, even across many different multi-sport studies, anywhere from 30 seconds to four minutes worth of you know effort in a single interval is effective at improving your VO2 max, providing that you're around or above VO2 max. Like this study here from 2022, I think it was, it was, 48 well-trained men strapping young lads and so they found doing four minute intervals was much better at improving vo2 max than sprint intervals okay so they were doing i think it was yeah 95 percent of their you know vo2 max speed in the hit intervals and they were doing 150 percent in the sprint interval so they were doing eight times 30 seconds and i think they also did 10 times 30 seconds all with longer rest times and so they both actually improved vo2 max but the hit sessions the longer ones that were four minute intervals were more effective in improving their vo2 max does that translate to better running speed over a time trial we'll talk about that in a second but not necessarily it just increased their raw vo2 max and as we know vo2 max doesn't correlate super strongly with performances all the time sometimes it's you know more related to your lactate threshold or just generally your overall aerobic fitness now this study looked at the same kind of thing like this 30 seconds on 30 seconds off approach compared to the 4x4 standard kind of hit vo2 max workout and once again you know they're doing the intervals really hard for the sprinting ones and right at vo2 max for the four minute intervals so once again it makes me think that yes training a vo2 max is going to improve your vo2 max if you're doing sprint performances it's probably going to improve other things 
other than you know your vo2 max like your running economy things like that being better at running really fast can actually help but it's not going to increase your overall cardiac you know power plus this is also just a thesis it was a good paper and i really liked it that's why i put it in but it is just a thesis it's not a fully randomized controlled trial bloody peer-reviewed thing now this next study from 2006 i think it was did infill training at 95 percent and 100 percent of this vo2 max of velocity and so they found that that the improvement of their vo2 max happened when they were right on their vo2 max compared to 95 percent vo2 max that makes a lot of sense you know 95 percent vo2 max is going to be more likely to be thresholdy stuff so it's not going to increase your raw vo2 max numbers necessarily but it still might be a little bit of an effect the problem with this study is that well they didn't actually say what intervals they did so it's basically fucking useless for this video isn't it so we won't even worry about that shit and so now we're getting into my favorite two studies that i was able to find on vo2 max this one's from 2020 and looked at cycling performance elite cycling performance okay they were doing shorter intervals and longer intervals with matched intensities okay so the volume of the actual intensity was the exact same they just modulated with the different protocols so one of them they were doing 30 seconds on 15 seconds off and the other one was four rounds of five minutes of work yes with a two and a half minute recovery and so what's interesting about this one is that actually there was no difference in the change of vo2 max all that really mattered was obviously that they were doing vo2 max stuff but interestingly enough mean power output over a 20 minute cycling block actually improved more with the sprint intervals compared to the longer intervals so essentially they were able to put out a better ftp test <laughs> after doing just the sprint intervals instead of the longer five minute blocks which i find really really interesting it makes you wonder whether it's the volume of this vo2 max work or it's actually the interval length itself you know if you're messing around with fatigue levels and stuff by doing shorter intervals it might actually be more effective it's pretty interesting so now we're getting into the last one okay aerobic high intensity intervals improve vo2 max more than moderate training so there were four different protocols in this there was a long slow distance one there was a lactate threshold group there was the short intervals 15 seconds on 15 seconds off and then there were longer intervals four minutes on four minutes off times four so this study showed that the group who were doing the 15 15 on average had a 5.5 percent increase in vo2 max whereas the four by four group was 7.2 so slightly better but realistically that's not a great deal of difference you know it's like two percent it doesn't really matter for common non-elite people running you know 201 marathons like one percent two percent is not a great deal but it's just super interesting now the problem with this is the study designs themselves i think they could obviously be a lot better there could always be better study designs okay i would love to see a study where they're doing intervals at 100 percent vo2 max and they have the same volume say 16 uh minutes of vo2 max volume and they do you know 30 seconds on 30 seconds off two minutes on two minutes off four minutes on four minutes off they keep the rest to ratio the same the work to rest ratio the same <laughs> they keep the interval lengths the same you know in terms of the volume and then they have a control group of just base training essentially i would love to see who would get the best results after an eight week block and then you switch them all around and then you see you cross examine if people continue improving or if they kind of plateau themselves out what i would love to see is that essentially but that would cost so much money and you need so many people to make this a valid study very interesting essentially what i think is that any kind of vo2 max interval is going to be effective and what you should actually do is cycle between them you know if you're doing a vo2 max session once every seven to ten days maybe every two weeks maybe for six weeks do four minute intervals and then six weeks after that do three minute intervals and then six weeks after that you can do 30 seconds on 30 seconds off you know and just do six week blocks test your fitness and then do it again with a different protocol and just constantly keep your body guessing because it's going to adapt continuously all the time if you give it different things to adapt to but i love this kind of stuff i love reading studies and i love getting into the dirt i hope you guys enjoyed this too if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and i'll see you guys tomorrow i've got to go home and get some water because i've just walked fucking for ages see ya
Also, the hats are on sale. Welcome 10 at checkout for 10% off. Get around it. <laughs>